So in a previous video, we've learned that we can use the quotient rule to calculate the derivative of a function which has quotients or divisions or ratios of some kind, kind of like the example you see here on the screen. In this video, I do want to point out that it's it's important to remember that you don't always have to use the quotient rule. That is to say, when a function has a quotient structure, by all means you can use the quotient rule, but sometimes uh, the use of algebraic or trigonometric identities can simplify the function in such a way that the quotient could be removed and perhaps you can compute the derivative in a simpler way. So consider the example you see on the screen here, f of x equals 3x squared plus 2 times the square root of x all over x. Well, since the denominator, I mean, it is a it is a fraction, right? That you're dividing by x right here. The quotient rule will be appropriate here. You could do low d high minus high d low and all that business. But recognizing that the denominator is a monomial, we actually can distribute a monomial denominator. And so this is the same thing as 3x squared over x plus 2 times the square root of x over x. For which, with the first term, you can see that since you have an x on top and bottom, you can cancel. And so the first term would actually become just a 3x. And then the second term, oh, okay, I recognize that if I think of the square root of x not as the square root of x, but instead as x to the 1 half power, that is, I think of it as a power function, then when you subtract the powers, you're going to have negative 1 half minus the first power right here. And so you get 2 times x to the negative 1 half power. And so... The function f itself is just a linear combination of power functions. Taking its derivative is essentially the same thing as taking the derivative of a polynomial. So just using the linearity of the derivative and the power rule, we take the derivative of 3x and we just get a 3. Uh, derivative of x, of course, is 1. And then for the next one, we're going to get 2 times negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves, likewise by the power rule. 2 times 1 half gives you 1. And so the derivative here turned out just to be 3 minus x to the negative 3 halves. Or if you prefer, you could write this as 3 minus 1 over, uh, you know, x squared of x or something. All of those things are equivalent to each other. I'm not going to worry too much about that. We'll just leave the original form right there. And so we can see that this function is much easier to calculate the derivative if we can simplify the rational expression beforehand. And so... The takeaway I want you to skip from this example is not just that sometimes we can avoid the, the quotient rule, is that in general, the proper use of algebraic identities and trigonometric identities can simplify functions to make the calculus calculations much, much easier. This is the whole point of knowing these identities. You know, many students like in a trigonometric class, they're like, trigonometric identities are the worst thing ever. No, what they are, tools. They're tools to simplify trigonometric expressions, much in the same way that algebraic identities like factorization formulas and the like help us with algebraic settings. It's not that a trigonometric identity or algebraic algebraic identity is poison or a curse upon you. It's a tool. And so the more tools you have, the more projects you can work on. And I get it. When you have a lot of tools and you don't know what all of them do, it gets overwhelming. But be aware, like in this example, a good algebraic simplification can make the calculus much, much easier. If you're not convinced, try computing the derivative of this thing straight using the quotient rule and compare what we did in this example and what you did yourself.